Okay, so I want to show you how to make uh, CSS navigation bars, both horizontal and vertical. The difference between the two is actually just one tiny line of CSS code. And I've got an HTML file and a CSS file already made up and ready to go. So my HTML file, it's linked over to styles.css, which has nothing in it so far. And then I've got an unordered list with a bunch of list items in it. Each list item has a link, and this would presumably be the navigation around my entire site. Um, what I need to do is add a couple of things to this. I'm going to give my unordered list a an ID for navigation. And over in my CSS file, I've got to add uh, a number of different CSS uh, selectors. And they're going to be found navigation li. Um, LIA. So this is going to grab the, the navigation bar itself. This will be the list items and then the A tags inside them. So there you go. Dreamweaver will help me out a little bit here. Um, so for navigation, I need to do a couple of things. There's a, a, a list property where I can set the I can get rid of the bullet completely. I can also get rid of the padding. Yeah. So that this doesn't. So basically, it looks like regular links. Um, the reason that this is typically done in uh, a list item or a um, an unordered list is that these the UL and the LI tags help give this a little bit more structure. Uh, it gives me more things that I can hook CSS designs onto. Um, yeah. And the other thing that happens with a couple of web browsers is some of them will not care about the, if you tell the list style to be none and get rid of the padding, if you do that on the unordered list, some browsers don't care about that. Some of them only do it to the list item. So what I recommend is that we take the design, the um, the zeroing out of everything on the unordered list and also apply it to the list items. That just kind of covers the bases across all browsers. Now the next one is we have to make the A tags, we want them to look like buttons. The problem is that A tags are inline elements, which means they're not allowed to look like boxes. Um, Paragraph tags are block level elements, and inline and block are kind of the, the two opposite types of elements on a page. A block element is like a paragraph, where every time you have a paragraph, it automatically starts on a new line, and there's always a line space after it, and it always goes the width of whatever is contained. It tries to stretch out as wide as it can. A tags are inline, so they exist like words in a sentence. And when I have an A tag, it can live happily in a sentence. It doesn't try to jump down to a new line or anything weird like that. I need these A tags to behave like block tags. And this is actually possible with CSS. Display block. And what will happen here is Dreamweaver will let me know that these are now effectively behaving like paragraphs. Dreamweaver puts this little dotted box around each one to, to just a, as a visual cue. This doesn't show up in the, on the page. But now I can do things like width of 100 pixels. Height of, let's do 30 pixels. Ooh, starting to look like um, boxes or buttons that I can uh, manipulate. To do uh, a couple of the other things that you probably want to do with most A tags like this, you're going to want to do text decoration none. And that'll get rid of the underline. I can do text align center. Ha -ha. And then to, horiz or to vertically align them is a weird little trick. There is a um, align vertical function, but it doesn't work. It only works inside table cells. It doesn't work inside block level elements like this. The trick to it is something really weird. Um, 
line height. What line height does is it, it normally sets the spacing. So you can do your paragraph spacing at single or double or triple or whatever uh, line spacing you want. With this, you're allowed to do it in exact pixel increments. And the way line height works is that whatever the line height is, it splits it in half, puts half on top and half on bottom. So whatever, if you need to vertically center some text, however tall the object is, set the line height to the exact same thing, and it'll vertically align it. So I'm going to preview this page. If Internet Explorer decides to work today. Ah, oh, there we go. And one of the nice things about the way I just did this is you see how my, the, uh, the link is, it's not just right over the text, it's outside the area. It's way out here, I can click on stuff. That's because I'm actually taking the A tag itself, the area that's clickable and expanding it. That's what I really like about this particular method. Um, the other thing that I can do with this is I can do the, I can set up a, what's called a hover. <coughs> so this is whenever the mouse goes over top of these, I can do something just as simple as color red. And now I get a nice little rollover effect. Okay, that's actually kind of nice. That's probably what you will want the vast majority of your navigation bars to do at the very most, at the most basic level. But it's, I mean, as okay as it looks, it also is kind of bland. It's just blue and red text. So here's how you can have a little bit more fun with this. If we go into Photoshop, and that's an old example, I can create, um, it was 100 by 30. That's how big I made my image. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a use some filters. Have you guys ever played with filters in Photoshop? Oh, they're so much fun. I feel like everybody starting out with Photoshop needs to have a, a, a short period in their life where they go absolutely bonkers with filters and learn them all and apply them to everything, and then you kind of get sick of them and, and learn to reel it back in a bit. Um, but I'm just going to try and put some a couple of things on here to. Those are filter galleries. We can um, oh yeah, can do that. This is going to make me sound like an old man. But when I learned Photoshop, we didn't have a filter gallery. <laughs> All right, um, there we go. There's a nice little texture. Uh, increase the increase that just a little bit. And I'll save this as a one kilobyte JPEG or a 340. Oh, I should probably do more than two colors. That's too big. Do the JPEG. Let's see if that works. Okay, so there's my little JPEG file, and now in Dreamweaver. I'm going to set that as the background image for my A tags. So I can use one image for all of my navigation bar. Just one. Uh, this is, I really, really like using this. And then I can change the color here. There we go, it's a little bit nicer. Font weight, let's make that bold and a little aerial or something like that. You know, let's use trebuchet. I find that to be a much prettier font. So, hooray, I actually now have, this is working. Um, I can still go back in here and preview it, and that red looks awful. Um, so, let's do this. Let's, uh, let me save this. Create a work folder. Here's how you can do a, um, uh, you can rotate the background image as well on hover. You're allowed to do that. So I will do, I can do control L and I'll just darken the entire thing. And I'll save it out as nav background dash hover.
So there's my hover graphic, and all I have to do is go to my hover uh, CSS rule, and I can change the background image. Let's see if it worked. It looks kind of nice. And here we're going to make it update. Yes. I think you showed it before with the navigation bar on the top. Oh, um, uh, yes. And to make it fade, I can probably add that in. Uh, I have to look at the code that I used for my other one. So I don't remember it off the top of my head. It's transition. It's just this. See if I can add it in the right place. You add it to the end of the A tag. I think this will work. It might not. Second. I think it is. Let me make it at something a full second, a thousand milliseconds, so it slows down. Wait a little bit. Why is that still working? Store some weird funky transition thing. Yeah. So <clears throat> now I'm going to go back to Dreamweaver and I'm going to break the hover a little bit. I'm going to set it back to the original graphic, which was just nav BG. Actually, I'm going to delete the hover one altogether. So I don't have to even worry about it. For hover, what I can say is instead of I want you to go and grab this image, and then I only want to display the bottom half of it. And this is the one I always have to fix. There we go. It's position Y. Only show the bottom half of that graphic. And if I want to be a little bit more specific on the link and visited, I can tell it to only show the top half of it. Let's see if that works. Because I have the transition on it, it's actually doing it. It's like giving me that cool, mm, cool effect. Um, if I don't have the transition on it, it'll be instant. So if I get rid of these lovely fun lines, effectively that that transition is happening in zero milliseconds. It's just instant. So there you go. There is, uh, and I think we're going to do a, a complete tutorial on this in a few weeks. Um, but that's how you can do an entire CSS navigation with, one, with a couple of CSS styles, one image, and one HTML file.